Right, so we've got about a third of the cohort coming in a little bit late. Um, so we'll get this going. This is recorded for everybody. We do have 30 minutes of Tracy here. The wonderful Tracy Green is here to drop knowledge and say his wisdom. Aloha from Hawaii, Ruby. And hey, everybody else that's been in. I know it's been a bit of a break. I hope everybody had a wonderful July 4th. So as everyone knows through each of these sessions, this is actually the kickoff. We're kind of at week three and a half, but we're going to call it week three. What we want to do first is recap what we've done for the first few weeks. So week one was jam packed <clears throat> with a ton of stuff. All right. So hopefully everybody has gone through this, figured out how a lot of these pieces have all connected. Week two, we started going through project scope and requirements. We, the client decided to change the scope and not do reference architecture diagrams. <laughs> um, and then some of you went through the risk issue and management plan. Now we're kind of at the meat. So we have two weeks left. This week, Tracy will be going through and helping you as you all define your proof of concept. So uh, Selena Sick, not gonna put her on the spot here, but Diane and Tony, as we go through this, may ask how your teams went through it so you can give them all feedback. If you on your team, if you've actually started doing your POC, maybe give us some thumbs up on the uh, emoji side. I uh, would love to know how many people have actually started going through this or if we've all been waiting. All right, we had a raised hand there. Okay, awesome. So what we're, for this session, uh, what we're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna kick it over to Tracy here to share a little bit more about, she's been through one of these or Tracy, sorry, you've been through one of these. Um, do you want to highlight maybe some tips, building a POC, sure. what you would yes. think about? Definitely for me, the POC, I look at as a quick win, right? What can I show the quickest with the biggest value. So it's something that's very containable. So it's one thing. It's not not two or three things. It's like one thing. It's like, let's say like it's how to convert a lead, right? It's just one thing and not getting convoluted. So it's really, really being very, very thoughtful and containing this one piece of functionality. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So and <clears throat> when you were giving some feedback to some of the others in the previous, was there anything that you saw was maybe confusing, right? As a tips of advice is taking on kind of like that role of the client or like maybe they did yes. too much, maybe they did too much little to that point. I think it is, I think it was, a, a, I think people got really ambitious and I think that's like people want to show everything. That's not the, that's not what you want to do here. You want to show some just one thing and do it really well, right? Because if you show multiple things, you kind of just take away the focus. So you really, it's just really one proof of concept. Like we get, and it's just to build confidence in your client that you, that you understood what they said, right? This is just like a sense check. Hey, we got this. We want to show you. And sometimes it's, it's, you know, not necessarily the easiest thing, but it's definitely something that maybe they're a little nervous about. Let's say the client's like a little unsure, like how is that going to work? And if that's something you could show right up front, to, to, again, a quick win is like not necessarily an easy win. It's just a, a way to build that trust with your client. So really picking the thing that they might be the most nervous about and you mm -hmm. could do in a one quick thing would be the, perfect thing that I'd say is a great POC. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. Love it. And I would imagine some people who maybe are diving would be like, I'm doing a full POC. <laughs> Again, when you get through it, and if that's what you've done, great. It might be too much, right? Um, right. And, so, right. Yeah. and you only know that by knowing that, right? That's just comes with a skill, mm -hmm. right? Because, right, you get in there, you're, I just want to build everything. I want to build it all. Like, it just, it's really having that the editing eye, right? You have to edit yourself, right? Like you don't have to show them everything. It really is just like, cause you want to do something like really containable, right? I, here's one functionality. And then it's like, then you start, like someone said, like you start building off that because the POC is not throwaway work. It's just the building blocks to get you started. Yeah, I love this. And uh, Erica mentioned this, would love your feedback on this. Tracy, yes. how, how you feel about this? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's actually it's exactly, exactly what I'd say, increment, iterate repeat it's exactly you build out the poc and then you start building off that and you just start then you all of a sudden you have your whole product right like mm -hmm. you just start having that it just yep. is this the way if you start just thinking that way always you're just always in that mentality it's just gonna be second nature to you yep i, I love that eric and think about how we've actually constructed you know we 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 push you guys in the beginning there was a lot there we started to slow this down but now it's all about thinking really critically about what you've all learned and then you know you will have additional sessions with your coaches in the coming weeks and then you'll be doing your final presentation so you'll actually have some time 
here to do this process, Erica, is, you know, think about what it is, potentially getting some additional feedback from either your peers or your team as you're walking through this. And then you'll get some feedback from Tracy here in, you know, a week. And mm -hmm. then you'll do another working session with all of your coaches, right? And then you will do your final presentation, which, you know, in the quest, we've given you an additional week to basically refine this so that you have something on your portfolio to continue to share. So I love that you mentioned that way, Tracy. And Tracy, I love that you've kind of validated that. Um, I don't know if Tony or Diane, let me know if you guys want to pop in and give your perspective when you went through this in the previous quest. Um, anything that you felt like you stumbled into as an issue? Um, if you guys can't get off mute, no worries. Just just let me know. Yep, go ahead, Diane. Um, yeah, I think uh, for me um, with that, it's just like, like Tracy said, just focusing on one thing and building out really well. Um, and it, that worked out really well for our team. Um, just focusing on one thing, whether it was, uh, um, I think we did cues. Um, so a couple of different cues and um, for the leads that were coming in. Awesome. So yeah. I, I also want to ask about format. So Diane, format, what did you share and what did you present um, maybe during the feedback sessions, but also in any deliverables that you were trying to highlight? Um, as you as you went through this, yeah. For the uh, for the POC, it was basically the um, those cues and in the org. Um, so mm -hmm. I just built out um, that part of uh, right in the org. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Yeah, it's definitely the, your first time, right? It's the first time you get to show the client that you your work. So you really mm -hmm. have the opportunity to show them right a piece of work, and you're in the org. So you, it's the first time that you know that you're, you know, you're the trusted advisor where, like, hey, I heard what you said and look what I did. And, you, you know, you get to show it like right in that org. So I yep. yeah. repeated myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Celine, I heard you go off mute quickly. You know, you're sick. Did you want to, did you want to jump in here? Um, I think the most valuable, um, <coughs> I think the basis for me personally was that I did the POC with the user stories in mind. Like I just, did one user story at a time. So it was a lot easier to go through instead of like just one, having one big thing all at the same time. So it kept me on my, like on a certain plan, like, okay, I'm gonna do user story one first or like user story five because that's the most important right now for the client. So that's how I basically um, did it. Awesome, love that. Yeah, and I would imagine for a lot of the teams, you're in different areas, right? You're kind of going back and forth. And again, this is for you to figure out how you want to approach this, right? Given given where you're at and taking into some of the accounts, what you know our assistants are doing, and obviously what what Tracy is sharing. So we do have okay. two questions first that will go into Tracy if you're able to answer, which is Heather. Thank you for asking this. This is yes. a great question. So right, yeah. So. <clears throat> it I guess the BA, so it really depends on the role, right? So I have a hard time because like to me, a consultant is like the consultant, like the functional consultant. So it's a BA, so it would be whoever is like the project lead and that is on your team who's the BA that is going to deliver it. To me, how I've done it in the past, whoever has built that POC should probably present it because they know it the best. So it really depends on what you're doing in a team. But like if you're the one who built it, let's say if you're the actual, you know, so I'd have a BA, whoever's running the team, hey, this is the story we use, set that whole up, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Tracy, who built the POC, who's gonna demo it. Because if you're not, if you didn't build it and you demo it, you're gonna have to do a lot of practicing because you have to know where all the buttons are. So usually rule of thumb is whoever built it should probably demo it. Mm -hmm. Nice, I love that, good deal. Uh, so Tim's got another question for you, Tracy. I think, you know, given what you've seen and also yes. so many different, so many different ways to approach this. Yes. So this it. is a, this is a live, it's a live demo. So definitely a live demo in the org. You could uh, record while you're giving that demo and then you can give it to them afterwards. But this is a live in person well, over Zoom, whatever. This is a, you know, a POC. Hopefully you have FaceTime with them. Um, so right. That's the whole idea of up until this point, you've been showing them screenshots. You've been showing them like PowerPoints. Now, like the proof is in the pudding, kind of thing. And know for everybody, based off of where you're at, and if you're having any difficulties with these, 
figuring out the best way to, to Tracy's point is you need to show your solution, right? So whether you kind of get stuck in like the only way that we can do this is through screenshots, that endpoint that Tracy's getting to is really that, that golden apple, right? That everybody should try to achieve to. Mm -hmm. If it's not possible, it's okay, right? We will definitely sure. want to make sure that everybody knows for that. Like if, if you're going through this and even like team constraints, et cetera, however you're learning through this is, is really what we want. Yeah, I guess that was my answer was a real world answer and not like yes. this is like in, in our world. So <coughs> that was a real world answer. In this world, you're, you'd want to do a video of you in the org. If you if you can't do it live, then a video would be best. If you can't do that, then screenshots. But we're really right. This is your chance to show off your work. And what better to, way to do that is to show you in the org. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I know a few of the teams were actually working on their POC. If you do want to get feedback from Tracy at the end of this, this is a really good time, you know, talking to Erica's point. Um, so if you do have that, just let me know. You can ping me, message me directly, put in the Q&A or raise your hand. Either way, we can get you on stage for feedback. It's an accelerant. But before we do that, Tracy is very passionate about UATs. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Tracy, well, I'm still, I'm honestly still confused at what they are. So I'd love for you to drop some sure, knowledge for everybody. Sure. Well, UAT, right, that. stands for User Acceptance Test. And so obviously it's a plan. So, right, we, you always have to have a plan because as you're building out, it goes back to like the, the increment, iterate, repeat, right? How do you do that? So I'm going to build out that POC or whatever my sprint is. Why I'm doing that when I'm done with it, I'm going to present that to the client. Now, the plan is the clients could be working on the, the acceptance tests that came out of the user story. As they're testing it, they're going to give you feedback because you're already going to be on the next sprint. And so by the time you get that, you're going to be on the next sprint. And I always tell every client the same thing. I'm going to get it 75%, about 75% right, because I can hear you, I can do it, but until you touch it and see it, it's not going to be complete. So you should never expect to have it 100% right. You should never feel bad. The clients are always going to have comments back. If they don't, then they're not, they're not testing it, honestly. If they don't have any comments, they have not tested it. So it's really just this plan that you put in place where you say, okay, I build out my sprint. Here's the plan. You're going to have X amount of time. I want you to go through every one of my user stories as acceptance tests, and you're going to check off that you did it. And then you really want them to say, you know, it passed. So you really want to make sure wherever you're keeping your information, like I use Trillo, whatever it is, that you know where what, what column it is. If it's in UAT, you want to have the client be the one who moves it over to acceptance. You don't you don't say that it passed. It's, it has to be a client that says that passed the user acceptance test. So I hope that and helps some people. Help me. I keep learning every single time you come on stage and teach me something. Um, <laughs> Tracy, I'd love to know, you know, uh, at different companies, different orgs, how have you seen maybe this process change or mm -hmm. people maybe just doing like QA procedures or how have you seen it kind of vary in yes. different orgs and companies? I definitely, right. I, I think that, it's been the, the the biggest variable that I've seen in all companies that every company does it differently. I like to do it the same. I just build it in as part of, I call it time box. People call it sprint. Cause like whatever the, the keyword, like it's a time box, right? I say, I'm going to do this amount of work for this amount of time. Let's say I'm working on say two weeks, right? I'm going to get these stories done in two weeks. Then the plan is I have that listed. So they have the story, so we have it, whether it's in a spell sheet, Excel sheet, uh, sheet, or Google Docs, Trillo, whatever you think. It's like you have it there, and it's just part of it. So when you when you say, okay, I've worked on this, I've tested it internally, now I'm handing it over to you, the client knows exactly how to test that. And that's why it's a plan. And that's what I think. That, so it has to have the steps. Because you can't just say, hey, I built this. The client's like, well, how do I know it works? Well, what did it do? What's the result? Did, did the results meet what it was supposed to do? Yes, great, I passed it. If not, they have to kick it back. They can't just leave it there, you have to kick it back into in progress and give you well-documented steps saying, okay, this is what I saw, here's what I expected, right? It's really important to get that. A lot of clients are like, it didn't work. You're like, well, okay, great. Um, and then a lot of times it comes to the part where you're like, is that a feature or a bug? Like, is that, and that's where it, the rubber meets the road. Did the requirements, was there a requirements issue or did you, or did something not working? And I really try to categorize things that are like showstoppers, things that just aren't working and you can't move forward, or is it an enhancement? So this is a time really that you have to build that trust with your client and the communication. It's all about 
um, setting expectations. Like they can't just think that everything's done. Like you really have to say, hey, this is a process. I'm going to get it again. 70% done until you touch it. Because even the, even the requirements they give you, they don't know until it's in play, right? Until someone actually touches it. You might think you want it somewhere. And you're like, oh, wait, we really want that button on the left because we're all left-handed, right? We didn't think about that. So it's really giving that opportunity that you have time to do that because it's not it's not this waterfall where it's all done and you hand it off. It's this iterative, we build it together kind of procedure. Yeah, and Tra I love that, Tracy. Yes. I'm, I'm wondering if we think about this, and and I'm kind of playing it back, not being an expert in the space, and you are. Is to me, it, as we go through the process, it always feels like at the beginning the discovery process. If you miss steps there, it sets you up for failure at the end, right? Yes. Um, and let's just say the live project. Um, you don't want to have a live solution in place if it's broken. And this is that other last kind of critical piece, right? Is if right. you screw up discovery, you can screw up the end solution. And if you don't catch things before it goes live, your clients will be angry. Is that yes. fair? It's that's great. Well, it's like, like, right, because you, 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 right. That's why you have those stop gaps. I call them, right. People call them different things. People call them like grooming sessions. They call them all kinds of things. Right. Mm -hmm. I call it right. You just get a sense check. Like, Hey, here's what I heard you say. Here's what I'm going to build. That sounds great. I built it. Did I build the right thing? Did it do what it, what, I, what you said it was going to do? If it did, great. If it didn't, is it because I didn't understand what you asked me or you didn't understand how to tell me or is it broken? And there's like, those are three categories. So the question someone says, does a client give feedback on the steps? No, they don't give back. The steps are, they're, they're that, right? The steps are there. That's built in the user store. They're already they already approved it. When you get the user stories approved, their steps are there because the, the steps are just a way of proving the user story. What they what they give you feedback on is a result. And what you need to know is like, what did they follow those steps? And did they get that result? If they did, did they, what steps did they follow, right? That's really clue. If they followed another step, hey, we said these are the steps and that's on them. So it's really clear. Like these are the steps you take. We agree these are the steps to get to what, the acceptance is, if it didn't work, tell me, is it like, do you do a different step? Or because sometimes, right, and that's a big thing that people don't understand. When I build something, I know how it works. I'm going to click on everything properly. Until someone clicks on something wrong, then you're like, oh, whoa, that maybe that should have been an automation. Maybe like, right, or there's a spelling error, small, small things like that, because you don't see them when you're working on it. So it's important to like give the, the client not just the steps, but have them also do some you know, organic testing because if they just test your plan, everything is going to work. But guess what? When you get out into the real world and then you uh, unleash it on your users, they're going to use it differently. And you really, need to, you really need to figure that out before it goes live. Yep. Awesome. Love it. So, Tony, Diane, Celine, I'm not sure if you even did UATs during your other quests. Would love, you know, your thoughts on that, if you did it or not. Um, while we're... if anyone did great if not i there's a great question from tim again thank you for all the great questions so who are we using as our client for testing purposes? yes that is a great i think that's a great question i don't think we established that last time i think again no. this is like a role play thing where you have mm -hmm. to like you know maybe maybe it is like hey this we can decide right now is maybe it's someone on your team maybe someone on your team plays that role and you say okay you're our client, like so whoever's building a demo, the other person does the, the UAT, mm -hmm. right? Maybe you bring yeah, and, it up that way. Yeah, and, and Tim, I think to Tracy's point is sort through it, but one good way of potentially doing this is, and Tracy, let me know how, how what you think about this, is people who did not do the user stories, maybe. Exa um, absolutely, right? right, yeah. Like if somebody didn't do the user stories, it wasn't part of that, and you shifted that out, a great opportunity for somebody to go through it is, somebody else on the team exactly exactly just yeah. try to right exactly yeah tony go for it oh no i was actually just about to say that as far as nice. the actual testing we did that in group um we just had like one person actually did the actual uat put everything on the spreadsheet step by step and then we had another person go through that spreadsheet and do the steps to verify mm -hmm. And Tony, when you were going through it, any thoughts come across your mind? I, I'd say one, did it feel like a really tangible exercise for you and kind of like closed loop thinking about how a client might think about it? And two, any maybe tips that you had when you were going through it? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I think everybody already said pretty much everything. That <laughs> <laughs> but, no worries. No, I was, was like, just, you guys on like the spot. 
Uh, I'm used to it. Um, yeah. No, it was, I think, like, I didn't actually do the spreadsheet, but I think the person who did just kind of went literally line by line as far as how they, I think they were doing it, like, as they built it and, uh, and just following that in place and uh, I don't know. You have a good point, Tony, right? Because there's two different kind of testing, right? Someone who built it, that's QA, right? You're QAing it, and that's something internally, right, that you want to make sure before you get to the client. But this is actually, you have to, it's a, like in, in this, right, right, we're pretending here, you have to put on the client hat and look at different, this is not the person who's building it, who's testing it, or who's on the development team. This is absolutely someone who is not part of the team is on the client side. That's why it's the user acceptance test because you absolutely have to do that for sure. You have to internally you have to do the same step. Someone has to go through and say it works before you can. You don't want to hand it to a client with, with it broken and say, oh, we didn't test it. The biggest thing that I've seen when I work with people, when I have them do something and they're like, okay, I did it. And I go to look at it and there's no test record. I was like, um, how do you know that works? You didn't even, like, you didn't even try it yourself. How can you hand that off to someone? It's not, we call it done, done, right? It's not done, done until you've tested it and you, and you yourself. And sometimes you've tested it and, and then, you know, it worked on your machine kind of things. And you miss things, that's fine. But as long as you, like, you did a test record and you saw it work, then you can hand it off to UAT. Awesome, 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 awesome. So if anybody else has any questions, this is a great time to ask. I think we went through a lot of them. If anybody else does have some questions, please let us know. Does anybody want to share their POC and or get feedback? Otherwise, don't be also afraid. Don't be afraid. Silence. I know. Great. I mean, okay. So here's what we're going to do. In six days, seven days. Okay. Erica's got a question. We'll do that first. Fire oh, that's a on. that's a really good question. Yes. It could definitely yeah. right. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. Because the steps, you already have that built out. That's a great point, Erica. Definitely. Mm -hmm. It could definitely be a starting point. That's I'm gonna applaud awesome. that. Kudos. I know we're gonna start giving out some points here or something. And then um, all right, Tarveen's got a question. Let's fly through this. Um you definitely write like you multiple times write like if it's not working, you have to keep testing it till it works. But if, when if it works. And then whenever you push it like to the next environment, you have to test it again. Absolutely, right? Test it in the environment you're testing it. It works, push it to production, but you have to test it in production because you there's so many things that can go wrong. You can miss a, a field, things, you know, the change that didn't work. So you definitely have to test it again when you get to production, if that is the question you're asking. Nice, awesome. So I'll take this one from Alina. So missed the week two feedback session. Can you get some feedback on the RAD? Uh, let's chat on the side. So hopefully we can actually get you in front of your coach and get some time. No, when you all have these direct working sessions with your coaches here in a week and a half, we're going to schedule those for everybody. I know it'll be a little bit out of order, but I promise you'll have time to like reorient and fix anything based off of it. Again, you know, this, we, we did remove this particular document because it is a little bit redundant with the business process model with kind of the stuff we're doing, but, um, we still want to get you feedback for sure. <clears throat> um, so let's not do it during this session. Let's try to get you some breakouts with your coach or with your, uh, maybe your potentially your coach assistant, but we'll chat on the side, Alina. And the other one is Erica, always firing away the questions here. Yeah, it's a great question. I think that, right, um, I don't know off any top of my head, but I'm sure there are. I can look for some and put them in, in the chats or I can you know, pass them off to the, you know, the assistants and have them put in the chats. I know like different coaches have different ways. And I think it's just, for me, it's a style thing, right? It, it can't just be a template. You have to know your users and how they learn. That's so important, right? Obviously, you're going to have a framework of steps, but is it going to be screenshots? Is it going to be like, right, how are you going to do it? And it's really something you have to work with your client to under, understand what they're looking for. Somewhat, maybe they want little videos of not, not, you know, just like screen videos, right? So there's different ways of doing things, but I will definitely see if I can find some documentation and share that with everybody. Awesome. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Go ahead, Celine. Um, Just to uh, speak to the training manual, that's the way I viewed the UAT from the previous quest. Like, I always thought about it as, like, you know, when you buy a phone pre before, like, you get those, like, little, little um, paper with the instructions on them. That's how I actually <laughs> was thinking about it. Like, okay, it says 
for you to actually apply, I mean, um, open the phone, you have to press this button, you have to do this. So, you know, it's almost as if it's like that, like, yeah, sometimes you feel like it's common sense, but then you still have to go through it so that you're sure that it actually is working right. So that's just, nice. um, and also just to speak over um, about the um, POC overall, I know, I mean, I mean, personally, I know I have a tendency to actually be a perfectionist about it. <laughs> like I won't, I won't stop until I'm actually done, done. But um, I feel like we also, we also have to think about it in, in a, in a like, you know, like what, what Erica said before, it's, it's a process. It's like you don't have to put out like this, sol this solid 100% project right now because there's always going to be feedback from the client and you're always going to have to like go back and try to make it a little bit better for them. Maybe not for this, um, maybe not for this run, but for the next run of the project, you're still going to be able to improve it for the next run. So, you know, just just try to just try to put something put together something that's clear and like as cohesive as possible so that's just mm -hmm. that's just my personal <laughs> opinion no, that's great it. great advice yep yep if you feel stuck move forward <laughs> and come back right. yep exactly right you'll you'll learn a lot by maybe screwing up the, the next section as well so um all right that's that's gonna be a wrap tracy Thank you again for all of your wisdom. It's always great to have you on stage with me. And thank you to our coach assistants, Diane, Tony, and Celine, per usual. And again, the next feedback session, bring your POCs. Let's fire this up bring on the it. screen. Bring, bring it. it. Let Tracy <laughs> rip it apart. And put it back no, I, I'm you. always kind. I will never be apart. But I will definitely give you right. honest honest advice. Awesome. Love it. Love it. All right, everybody. See you guys we'll next time. Bye. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks again, Tracy.